Hi, today I'm going to talk about wearable magnetic field sensing for finger tracking. So how do we have a wearable pointer? We really would like to be able to wiggle your finger around in the air and get like a continuous 2 or 3D signal out of that fingertip. So magnetic field sensing is actually a very promising approach. So actually this was the motivation for the work I did earlier, um, several years ago, um, at, this presented at WISC on U-Track. The idea here was we actually had a magnet on the back of the thumb and then some sensors on the back of the fingers and you could actually rub your finger and thumb together to act like as a trackpad. The problem is there was actually a few limitations of this. I tried to re-implement it a few years afterwards and it didn't always work. The problem is we actually assumed a static hand pose. And then if you rotated your hand, you moved your hand back and forth, it would actually fail. So here's a quick overview of magnetic field sensing. I'm not gonna get into all these details. You can you know, pause the video and look at this or read the paper for a little bit more. But fundamentally, the magnetic field sensor, the magnetometer gives us three readings of the magnetic field and we have five unknowns. So we have an under-constrained problem. For U-Track, what they did is they added a second sensor. So now we have six magnetic field readings and only five unknowns, three for the position and two for the rotation. And the equations here are actually a much more direct formulation of that work. The problem is we still have the ambient magnetic field. So one of the insights here is that the Earth's field is far away um, and the magnetic field actually falls off very, very fast. So over a very short distance, we can assume that the magnetic field is constant. So here we can actually look at the difference between uh, two sensor readings to eliminate the magnetic field. The problem is now we have a, a difference of readings. We don't have the absolute readings, so we can't actually use the equations on the previous slide. So bringing this all together, we actually need three sensors. We can use two difference readings um, to uh, get rid of the ambient field and then plug those into the previous equations. And we, now we have this crazy equation the, at the bottom. And the problem is we actually need to solve the inverse of this equation. We're actually given the magnetic field reading from the sensors, we have to solve for position. So the past approach is we're using numerical optimization methods. Um, in early tests, we found this very lacking, most likely because this equation is so complex. So we developed a different approach. In particular, we use particle filters. Here, each particle modeled the position and rotation of the magnet. We could then use the position and rotation of the magnet to go through the equation in a forward direction. So basically, given an assumed position and rotation, what should the magnetic field reading be? And then we could then compare that to the actual magnetic field reading. That gives us an error. Then we conducted a simulation. We actually did 50 different runs of 5,000 uh, simulated sensor readings. And this let us test various permutations of the, uh, of the system. And kind of the, the best results wound up being the kinematic model um, using the particle filter. Here we found like the 95th percentile error was less than five millimeters. So in conclusion, we need to account for the ambient magnetic field and we can actually use three sensors to do that. The four kinematic model let us kind of get around the challenge of solving this crazy inverse equation and it actually provided some extra constraints. The next steps would be actually to re-implement this and evaluate this. Um, I actually did an early implementation of this and it worked reasonably well, but my ground truth tracking failed. So I wasn't actually able to test it um, in a formal way, um, but I think it's actually very promising. Thanks.